Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the sixth edition of the Sports Parenting webinar series by Sports Village. Uh, Sports Village, as you most of you know, is a sports education company running structured sports and physical education curriculum in schools across the country. The Pathways webinar series is an attempt by us to help questions uh, from enthusiastic sports parents that come to us get answered directly by experts in the field. Um, we've had previously many experts join us on topics like careers in sports, mental conditioning, menstruation and sports. Today, there's a topic which is of far, far interest to everyone. That's nutrition and sports. Um, to talk about that, I have with me Mr. Kanan from Daily Line, Mr. co-founder. He's also a nutrition coach. Um, most importantly, he's very passionate about sports. He himself has two kids who is following his regime on nutrition and sports, and he'll himself talk about what's the difference he has seen. He also, through Daily Nine, works with a lot of people to help them develop healthy eating habits. Uh, Daily Nine is an app-based nutrition program uh, oriented towards results on weight management and healthy eating. So all yours, Kanan, over to you. We want to hear more of your insights and, uh, you know, parents, a warm, warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining on a Saturday morning. On the uh, During the course of the webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop in into the chat and we'll take them as we go. So again, thanks. And I'm so excited. Kanan, over to you. Uh, we'll hear from more for you. Thank you. Thank you, Rupert. And good morning, uh, everyone who's joined. Uh, my name is Kan Raman. Um, I will have a set of slides. I'm going to start sharing my screen in a minute, just so that we have some discussion points. Uh, and then there's a structure to the session. So if you just give me a second, I am going to do that right now. So just let me know if it is visible. Yeah, we can see. Perfect. Got it. Okay. So just as a quick introduction, so Nupur, uh, thanks for that uh, very good introduction about myself. Uh, but um, I, and, and I just want to recap, I guess, a few points, just so that you understand my background. And also, I guess, the real life context that, that uh, I, I bring to this. So my name is Kanan Raman. I'm one of the co-founders of this company called Daily9. Um, I'm 45 years old. I live in Chennai. Uh, my background is uh, from an education perspective is I actually studied initially as a chartered accountant and have a couple of other finance qualifications and then later got interested in nutrition. So in my thirties, I got interested in nutrition and uh, had a lot of the questions that I suspect some of you have, which is what is a healthy diet? What do people mean when they say balanced? Uh, and and what, what should you actually eat as a family? And, and that's what I was most interested in and realized that that's the same question everybody has. Uh, but it's very hard, if not impossible, to get a straight, honest answer without somebody trying to sell you something. So the reason we set up Daily Nine is to give people well, reliable answers. And I think we, we saw this during COVID, you know, people suddenly realized there is science around vaccines. There were studies and you have to follow the science. The same holds true for diet. Okay, exactly the same logic holds true for diet. There is good science on what is good. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't surface. There are a lot of scientists who know the answers. And unless you know one of these people, you will not get these answers. So for us, it is bringing that science to everybody and, and helping you actually figure out what to do. And I'm hoping to share that with you in this uh, session. Um, and as Nupur said, I know some of you have, or all of you will have questions. So please do type it out in the chat. We'll do our best to cover as many as possible. And I'd like everybody to leave this with at least answers to those burning questions that might be on top of your mind now. Um, I've played a lot of sport myself. I played TT, badminton, table tennis. I still play a fair bit of sport. I've got two sons. They're 14 and 11 years old. Um, and therefore have a pretty good sense of the real life challenges when it comes to, you know, dealing with children, getting them to eat healthy and, and things like that. So I'm hoping to also share some practical ideas with you around how to do that without it becoming a, a battle to get them to eat more vegetables. So, so that's a little bit about me. I'm, I'm going to jump into uh, the topic of discussion. And, and what I want to do is cover three or four major points. The first is just give you a, a basic understanding of how to think about health and your body okay because it can be quite confusing uh, you know uh, to there is no framework you know like in physics there is gravity 
we know there is this concept of gravity and there is a basic equation of E equal to MC square. There are some basic fundamental laws in other sciences. I would like to leave you with a fundamental thing to understand about the human body and health, which then gives you a structure of, you know, okay, I should never forget these three or four things. And, and the most simple point is all our bodies are a set of chemical reactions, okay, at, at very simple levels. And the things that all of us experience, as you know, our hair grows, at least until, until we get to a certain age, your nails grow, you need to maintain your skin. And when you think about that, that's a very busy, busy body. The human body is very busy. At any point, hundreds of chemical reactions are going on right now. Whether it is around, you know, again, simple example, maintaining your skin, nails, your hair, fighting germs around you digesting your food, supplying energy for activity. So the body is a very busy place, okay? And therefore, it needs quite a few things to keep busy, okay? that's So the body is a set of reactions. And for that reaction, you need inputs, okay? And, and the inputs are not just food. So it's food, it's activity, it is sleep, and some stress management. And especially more recently, since COVID has come about, some people are starting to understand stress and mental health. I'm glad it's becoming a topic of discussion. You know, we are recognizing that, that mental health matters, right? And, and it makes a difference to all of these. Okay? These are interrelated. You cannot say, you know, I will try and deal with my diet. I will look at the rest later. The body doesn't work this way. And, and a simple example is sleep and food. Okay, If you don't get enough sleep, your sugar cravings go up. It is a fact. Okay. There are enough studies that have been done. So not getting enough sleep actually increases your craving for snacks. Okay. It's just how the body works. And, and so the point I'm making is these are interrelated. Look at them together. Okay. So food, moving your body, sleep, and how you feel, all four matter. So when you think about the health for yourself and your family, think about all four areas, okay? We will never get all four under complete control. Life is too messy. Life is too messy. We will do our best. But these are the four areas to think about and, and it's valid for everybody on this call and the children, okay? Food, activity, sleep, and they do have a form of stress between peer pressure, school, exams. That is going on. It's a real thing. And if you just acknowledge it's a real thing, okay? I would just like to break food a little bit more because when I say activity, people understand it's playing, exercise, sports, sleep is, is a simple concept. Stress also, I think we understand what I mean, but most of the confusion tends to revolve around food, right? So I want to break that down a little bit more. So when you think of food, again, think of that chemical reactions in the body, okay? That's the simplest way to think about food. What is food? It's a way to give your body what it wants as simple as that. And that is not as simple as calories. Okay? Calories is a man-made concept. Your body does not know what a calorie is. Your body says, look, I need energy. I need vitamins. I need minerals. I need fiber. I need water. Those are the ingredients your body needs to do all of its job. Again, which could be maintaining your health, immunity, fighting diseases, everything. But you have to give your body all of these ingredients and it will do its job and and that's what your body needs okay it needs all of these ingredients and these are examples of how you can give you those your body those ingredients so energy which i think a lot of us are aware you and your kids need energy you need protein not just for muscles protein is needed day to day okay protein breaks down into something called amino acids we all need protein every single day for our health okay it's very true for children. They don't need just energy. They also need protein. They need some fat, okay? Uh, vitamins and minerals and water. And these are the kind of foods that break down and give you these. So energy, I think, is, is relatively easy in the Indian diet between rice, roti, poha, bread. We have lots of choices of grains. And then more modern versions like cereals and muesli. So there's no shortage of grains in our diet. So grains are easy. That's energy. The proteins become things that can be a shortfall. So we've had in India, some parts of India, historically, we've had a shortfall of protein in our diet. So that's something to pay attention to. So dal, chana, rajma, soy, these are examples along with dairy that give you some protein. Vegetables and fruits are necessary because of the vitamins and the minerals. Okay. Again, those are essential. You need to get, and, and I think 
you might be tired of telling your kids to eat more vegetables and fruit, but the reason they matter is the vitamins and minerals are needed. Okay. Water, we all need enough water and some treats. Okay. I always include treats in a discussion. It's, it's true for us adults as well as the kids. Some treats are absolutely okay. And I'll give you an example of how to balance these on a plate in a minute. Okay. But the idea is to give you a simple framework. What is health? It's food, movement, sleep, stress management. These four for all of us need to be dealt with. And food has to be approached with these groupings. So if you think about the hierarchy, so I said there are four things, right? In terms of level of importance, okay, we should be, we do, humans have evolved to spend at least a third of our lives sleeping, okay? If you think about it, if you sleep you know, seven, eight hours a day, that's one third of your day. We've evolved to sleep that much and it is essential. So we can keep putting these things in different orders, but surprisingly, all the science that we have keeps going back to the same thing. Sleep is the foundation, okay? And I think sometimes, at least as adults, we say, no, 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 we need to short fall on sleep. I'll wake up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. I will do that extra exercise. And the intention is a good one. Okay, but what we don't realize is unless we get enough sleep, a lot of the other things go for a toss. Okay, so the example I gave earlier was if you don't get enough sleep, your cravings for food goes up. Equally, if you don't get enough sleep, your immunity goes down. If you don't get enough sleep, your body doesn't burn fat as much. So it's the foundation of all of those things. So the point I'd like to leave you with is sleep is not a nice to have. Okay. Sleep is essential, absolutely essential. So when we coach people, a lot of the time we tell them, you know what, I'd prefer, I'm okay if you do, make, miss exercise every now and then, but don't skip on sleep because it has a chain reaction everywhere. And that's even more important when we talk about kids. Having a sleep schedule, okay? So this isn't easy to do, but to give you an example, so my children will be in bed by 8.30. It's not easy, okay? You have to make an effort. They go to bed by 8.30. They're asleep by 9. -ish. Most days they're asleep by 9. And I don't wake them up. There is no alarm. They wake up by themselves. And they tend to wake up between 6 and 7. Okay. So on an average, and they're 14 and 11. So even at this age, they need about 9 to 10 hours of sleep. Just because of how hectic their day is. Right. The body needs that much time to recover, to process all the information they are getting, and to deal with that level of tiredness. And that makes a difference to how they feel, the level of concentration, how well they do in sports. So make sleep a priority. Um, there are, again, you know, we can, we can do a session itself on what good sleep habits look like, right? And it will feel like a battle with your kids. But all I'm saying is sleep is huge. It's a big deal. It's a big deal and it's a habit you set for life, right? So my kids now, they understand because they see how it translates. It's easy to convince them. So after the initial battle, it gets easier. That's the good news, okay? And then on top of sleep, we build the other habits of diet, sports, and then literally everything else is, is, is on top of that. But think of that as the hierarchy of what you give importance to. Now, you've, you've heard the saying, right? So I'll, I'll delve a little bit now. So for the next 10-ish minutes, I want to focus on diet a little bit more. And show you some plates, okay? Because ultimately, at least, you know, the reason we started Daily 9 is let's get practical. Theory is fine, but, you know, let's get practical and talk about what to do. So as kind of, before I show you a few example plates, you know, we are what we eat is very, very true, okay? And this applies to food. This actually also applies to other aspects of your life. So what I mean by that is, you know, when you think of cosmetics or shampoos, anything you put on your skin is absorbed by your body, okay? So we are what we eat and we are what we put on our body. So any, anything that is applied to our body is, enters our system. So it applies to things like cosmetics. It's very true for food. So we are what we eat is very much, it's not a metaphor, it's reality. <laughs> it's scientific reality, right? So what we eat, what we drink impacts every cell in our body, okay? Because we can't talk to our body, right? Your body will take signals based on what you're putting into it, based on how much you're moving it, based on how much you're sleeping, okay? And your body will, based on that, decide lots of things, how to prioritize energy, lots of other things. So you are giving a signal to your body every time you eat something. Okay. And it impacts everything from, and you will hear these concepts, especially if you're on social media, somebody will talk about your gut microbiota, somebody will talk about genes, but bottom line, all of that is impacted by every single thing you eat, even our brain, right? Even our brain. And the science is emerging. So especially among our, you know, the earlier generation, we might start seeing mental health issues or dementia, 
all of those things as we age, right, is influenced by what we eat. So very real, we are what we eat. It's not just a saying, just kind of uh, uh, imbibe that spirit. And, and all I'm doing in this slide is making that point, right? Like I said, your body is a busy place. At any point, your body is deciding what to do. Do I release this particular hormone? Do I carry out this particular reaction? Do I deal with your immune requirements, right? So food is more than fuel, okay? It's quite easy to be caught up into thinking, you know, food is energy, okay? Energy is one small part of what food does. Food is, does a lot more for your body. So every time you eat, you're sending a message. It is not just fuel. So think about food in that context. So I guess let's cut to the exam question. Right? The exam question for many people is, okay, so what do I eat? What does a balanced plate look like? Okay, and, and that's what this slide will talk about. So a balanced plate has certain components, okay? And we'll walk through each, okay? And the idea isn't that every meal you eat looks like this. That's very hard to do in daily life, okay? But if you think about a day, in a whole day, if you can balance your eating in a 24 hour period to look a bit like this, that is the aim, okay? So it's not that your breakfast should be balanced, your lunch should be balanced. That's very hard to do and not necessary. We, we can't eat perfectly all the time, but think about a 24 hour window. So the balanced plate concept that I'm talking about isn't for every meal. I'm saying over 24 hours, if this is the balance you can strike, that's where you want to be. So for a lot of us, lunch might be one way, dinner might look completely different. That is absolutely okay. So think about this in a 24 hour context. And I'll explain each component of this, right? The first is no surprise, vegetables and fruits, okay? And if you look at this drawing, you can see it's actually split into three parts, okay? The vegetable and fruit is actually a third. The grains is a third and everything else is a third, okay? So remember that three parts, grains, vegetables and fruits, and then you've got proteins and fats. So the vegetable and fruit component is kind of obvious. You won't be surprised to hear it's important. On the other hand, you've got whole grains, right? And whole grains are absolutely fine, okay? And 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 I'm happy to take questions around, you know, rice versus millets. You know, we, we, we talk about that a lot. But whole grains are absolutely fine. You need energy. You need more. Grains give you more than just energy, okay? They also have fiber and other things. But grains are a third. And then we talk about, I said protein is very important. So there are foods that give you protein. There's dairy and fats. And there are some treats in there. So if you think of your daily eating, uh, for most of us, we don't have a problem getting enough grain. Like I said, you know, between uh, breakfast is almost always grain. So if you have breakfast, whether it is idli, dosa, poha, or it is bread, cereal, oats, grains are almost given for, for breakfast for most. That's not a bad thing, but grains kind of start, you start your day with grains. So you do, it's easy to get grains in our life. Okay. What is not so easy to do is get more vegetables and fruits and protein. So the gaps we find when we work, and we work uh, with adults, but they implement these concepts across the family. We find grains are not a problem. Vegetables, fruits are there in the diet, but you just need to increase the quantity, okay? So which vegetable, which fruit, honestly doesn't matter as much, okay? Buy what is accessible, buy what is reasonable for you. But if you get enough vegetable and fruit, cook it any way you like. Traditional Indian cooking is great but you just need to get more. So normally we tell people, serve yourself more of whatever vegetables you're cooking, okay? And the missing for most people ends up being protein, okay? So you will have plates with rice or dal or some sabji, but you don't get enough protein. So I'll show you a few plates, okay? Which bring this balance to life. And these are all, you know, all of these are plates that my kids eat, okay? So in this example, so this one has idlis in it, it's got vegetables. And what you're seeing on the top left is just paneer, okay? It's just cut pieces of paneer, hand tossed with a little bit of spice. But you can see this is a third, roughly, right? You've got grain, which is idlis. You've got raw cut vegetables, okay? My, my wife also works. We don't have the time to make elaborate dishes. So it's quick and dirty at times, which is perfectly fine. Okay? So all that is there is chopped cucumber, capsicum, carrots. Could be anything, but it's three equal parts. And it is pretty filling. That paneer makes it filling for them, okay? So they finish this and they are done. They don't come back and say, mommy or daddy, I'm hungry. They're like, it's filling. Okay. So that's one example. In this case, looks more South Indian because of the idli. Another example. So this is rotis. So the bottom row has rotis and dal. On the top, you've got cucumber, onions, and the top left is actually a, a, a brinjal sabji. Okay. Again, 
you've got grain from the roti, you've got dal, which gives you some protein, and you've got some vegetables between the brinjal and the cucumber. Again, simple, more importantly, balanced, right? It, it ticks all the boxes. It, it gives you the grains, it gives you the vegetable, it gives you the protein, it's filling, it's tasty, job done. Another example, so the first one had idli, then we had roti, this one is rice, okay? Now this one has, it's so the, the earlier two examples were pure vegetarian. That's why you had dal and paneer. This one has eggs in it, right? So again, the rice is the grain, you've got cabbage on top, and you've got a mixed vegetable. Uh, this is a South Indian kutu at the bottom, and you've got one boiled egg, right? Again, simple, balanced, right? And for most people, we find the change might be adding some vegetable, you don't have to, especially with kids, you don't have to worry about reducing the grains, okay? They usually burn the energy. The difficulty is getting more vegetable in, in the meal. And the eggs give you the protein. So those are three examples. Now, the question always comes up, and we'll talk about snacks. Snacks are always a huge, huge topic. We'll talk about snacks. But treats are absolutely okay. I wouldn't worry about making treats a, a, a battleground with the kids. Because you know what happens when you, for example, when you eat like this, the meals become quite filling. Okay. And the kids don't get, and this is true for adults. We don't get hungry soon afterwards. And that matters. Okay. If a meal is not balanced, what will happen is one hour after the meal, you're like, you know, I feel like eating something. Okay. That, that's the problem if the meal itself is not balanced. Okay. Then you're just fighting a battle with willpower. That's a losing battle. Okay. And that's where a balanced meal makes a huge difference. The follow-on effect is for a couple of hours at least you're not going to feel hungry, right? Because once that snack craving starts, it's it's uh, it's usually the craving wins, right? We know that. So this deals with that problem by saying, look, it fills you up for longer. You're not going to feel hungry as often, right? And that helps you then every now and then you feel like having a treat, no problem. No problem at all. And then uh, if I may, so while sure. you were on that, there is a question in the chat about if there are any specific recommendations for pure vegetarians. And I think the first two examples that you showed, there is paneer and uh, dal as an example. Any other uh, insights that you can share for pure vegetarians? Is that for protein Uh The question is just uh, for pure vegetarians, but I assume... Okay, no um, problem. So I, I, yeah. I generally tends to be a protein-based question. So I'll answer it for protein. But if, if uh, whoever asked has a different uh, requirement, please add on to it in the chat. So when you think about protein, so I am, other than eggs, we are pure vegetarians. Um, mm -hmm. And so the the high quality, the, the good protein sources um, in terms of the choices you've got are dal, chana, rajma, um, they tend to have higher carbs, but they've got some protein. Okay, they're good choices. You can day-to-day -day use them. Dal, chana, rajma. Soy bean is a pretty good option. So this is not the soy chunks. Okay. This is the soy bean. It looks a bit like rajma except smaller. Okay. Uh -huh. The soy chunks are very Is that what, uh, it's called lobia also in I think some reason? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, lobia. So soy bean is what we want. Uh, the, the nuggets are, are, are processed extremely so you really don't want to be avoiding that it's convenient but honestly not as great nutritionally so dal chana rajma is fine soybean is great you can make it the same way you make chana and rajma okay soybean so soybean is great if you like tofu which is based on soy that's that's okay and after that you get uh, paneer is a good option okay um, in addition you will find so a point that a lot of people may not be aware of is you actually do get some protein from vegetables Okay, it's not something unfortunately anybody talks about, but vegetables actually have a decent amount of protein uh, if you eat enough of it. Okay, so the options I've mentioned, I'll recap it in a minute. In addition, you've got milk, you've got curd. Okay, so if you think of your daily diet, um, I'll recap the options dal, chana, rajma, soybean, and tofu if you like it, paneer, milk, and curd. And if you can spread out your uh, eating across the day to include some of these, you'll find uh, you don't have difficulty. So for example, you know, milk is something we could easily start your day with, a glass of milk. Uh, curd can be a part of lunch and dinner, okay? Plain curd is fine. You can also make hung curd or Greek yogurt. 
So there is a lot of advertising around Greek yogurt. So brands like Epigamia, for example, will advertise Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is nothing but hung curd. So if you take a cheesecloth and you put curd in it, the water comes out. Okay. If you just hang it for an hour, the water comes out. What is left is Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is hung curd. Okay. It's there in you know, recipes like Shrikhan, for example, use uh, hung curd. But hung curd is a high source of protein and you can just make it at home. Okay. You can just make it at home. It's got double the protein of normal curd because the water is taken out. Okay. But that hung curd or Greek yogurt is a great option. So if you say milk, start the day, lunch uh, or in dinner, you have curd or Greek yogurt. And within the meal itself, there is dal, chana, rajma, soybean or paneer. You'll be getting, you'll be getting a good set on a daily basis. So hopefully that clarifies. But if you've got follow on questions, please, please, please. do. Yeah. Ask. So follow on, um, I think Kanan, he also mentioned that proteins is one thing. Is there also some vitamins which are highly found in non-veg, uh, which need to be replaced? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good question. So the two things that vegetarians generally find it hard to get um, are B12, vitamin B12. Um, is is one thing that you don't get. And the second is omega-3s, okay? And and you will hear about it uh, quite a bit. So omega-3 is a couple of, uh, uh, it's, it's like an essential fat that is there in fish, okay? So um, I wouldn't rush as yet to suggest you supplement, okay? So generally we struggle to get vitamin B12. Um, for vitamin B12, uh, things like milk have a little bit, uh, a variety of fruit and veg, they all tend to have a little, 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 bit of these uh, vitamins okay uh, and, and what we find especially with children is having some nuts and seeds in the diet helps plug some of these gaps okay so you get a little bit of omega-3 in things like chia seeds or flax seeds or pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds okay now some of these are easy to add in the daily diet some of these are not Okay, um, so I'm not for now, I think it's possible to actually get these also from vegetarians. It's harder to get unless you're eating a really nice high quality diet, which includes, like I said, some nuts and seeds, in which case it's okay. But to be aware of um, B12 is hard to get and omega-3 is hard to get. For adults, at least you can test B12. Uh, if you do a blood test, for example, it will tell you if you have a deficiency or not. Like, for example, you can find out for vitamin D. So vitamin D also is something everybody tends to be deficient in because we don't get enough sunlight. And that's the main way to get vitamin D. Okay, But for your question in terms of vegetarian sources, yes, B12 and omega-3s are the two things that are hard to get. Um, B12, if you do, if you're itching to go to Amazon and shop, um, B12 is okay to supplement. Okay, B12 is okay to supplement. Omega-3, it's really unproven whether there is a benefit at all. Okay, There are plenty of supplements on the market, just like you will get for probiotics. Plenty of supplements. Benefit is honestly un not known yet. Studies have been done. They have not shown a benefit. Okay, So I would not hurry to buy a supplement for an omega-3. No matter how good the marketing, it has not been proven to, to have a benefit. For B12, if you do want, you can test it. A supplement is, is, is safe to have. Okay. Is, is that is that okay, Nakupu? Yep, I think. Uh, there was one question on, does the milk fill up the requirement? I think you have already uh, answered that, that milk is also a source of protein that can be added. Yeah, and and I would just say, um, again, it's um, it's easy to get caught up in saying, you know, protein is, is kind of one requirement. Uh, but when you think of your protein choices, the more variety, the better. Because all of these foods give you more than just protein, right? Milk doesn't give you protein. It gives you protein, it gives you calcium. It itself has got vitamin D and a few other things. So when we think, that's why we like putting these foods into buckets. Here are your sources of carbs. Here are your sources of proteins. And here are the options for veggies, for example. And within that, the more variety, the better, because they also give you other things, right? Like I said, different nuts give you different things, different proteins, foods give you different things. And that's what we want. We want variety. Right? And that doesn't mean you cook a different thing every day. You know, that's not going to happen. But it's just, therefore, thinking, look, I'm not going to end up having uh, just milk every day. Right? The more variety, the better every now and then. And so a practical way to deal with it is to say Monday to Friday, most people have a set schedule. Right? So I say Monday to Friday, do you're okay to have a set schedule, have a routine. Right? Because you need to shop and lots of other things need to be done. But Saturday, Sunday might be the time to add that little bit of variety into the mix. So if you're somebody who's kind of, you know, in charge of the kitchen in the house, that's the way it might be simpler to implement. Monday to Friday, we have a schedule. The variety gets added in the Saturday, Sunday. And, and that's what we end up doing because, you know, you can't do a different thing every day. Uh, but, but yeah, that helps get a variety of protein sources in the diet. 
Okay, Nupur? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to spend a couple of minutes on is just to show you what top athletes eat because um, that is, again, you know, you might be wondering. And also it's... Uh, Uh, Roger Federer, not active anymore. But if you look at the kind of foods they eat, and they're, these athletes are very public about what they do. Okay, So if you look at his breakfast, what he eats before, after a match, etc., it's quite a predict, It's quite a simple schedule, right? We're talking, uh, so Roger Federer lives in Switzerland. Um, and so there's oats, cereal with fruit, coffee, pasta, veggies, seafood, bananas, water, right? And some treats. There's nothing complicated going on, okay? You know, all of these players, because they perform at such an elite level, will have some supplementation involved, okay? But that is because they perform at such a high level. But your baseline diet, it's simple, it's high quality, okay? Now, you look at it, now plain cereal for him is oats, fruit, uh, whole grain pasta with tomato sauce, just vegetables. All of these are high quality whole foods, right? And, and that's the most important thing to take away, okay? Because you will keep seeing ads for, you know, celebrity eggs or... Athlete X has a supplement. That's just uh, everything else. It's a 1% that they need because of their level. It's not It's not what uh, what most of their diet comprises. Now, I look at two, three other examples. Everybody hopefully knows Mr. Usain Bolt, 100-meter, um, 200-meter, 400-meter athlete. And, and again, if you look at his diet, look at the ingredients, right? There's an egg sandwich. And, and again, he lives in Jamaica where there's a lot of meat. So there's pasta with beef, veggies, yams, chicken, fruit, water. And his favorite snack is KFC chicken wings. Okay. So again, the baseline diet is it's simple, it's high quality, it's balanced. We come back to the same theme again and again. There's grains, there's vegetables, there's protein. Okay. We'll keep coming back to the same things. And that's what they do very well. They do this 90% of the time. Okay. And 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 that's the takeaway. Uh, last couple of examples, Serena Williams. And I wanted to cover both genders as well so that you can see there isn't you know a dramatic difference. Now, all the green is. You know, fruits and vegetables here. Again, oats for breakfast. Uh, and then you've got brown rice, you've got bread, almond butter, green tea, and some treats. The same themes, the same themes. So even the top athletes are getting that balance of grain, protein, veg, and fruit. And then our own Mericom, famous boxer. It isn't quite, uh, she doesn't have the access. I mean, a lot of these athletes we associate with fame and money. Mericom doesn't have access to uh, as to that kind of resources. So it's more simple, but it's just home-cooked traditional Manipuri food, right? Which is rice, which is a grain, meat, vegetables, right? Again, the same themes again and again. And like I said, there'll always be a little bit of supplementation. Okay? They need a little bit of extra protein because of the level at which they're operating. Or they need extra vitamins because of the level of exertion they have. But the foundation is the same. Okay. I, I'll just leave you with a quote, which is a diet that's bad for your health can be good for your performance. Okay. So, so and the reason I say that is don't distinguish, right? What's good for health is the same. That's good for performance. Okay. Everybody needs to top it up a little bit, but the foundation is the same across elite athletes. If you look at Indian chess players now, you know, Pragnananda is in the news, Gukesh is in the news. They all eat a good, I mean, Pragnananda in his interviews, he talks about how his mom travels with him and she cooks food for him, right? So he's in the top 10 in the world from a chess point of view and he's eating home cooked food, okay? Because that's what helps him get the energy, gets the balance. High quality foods are what they're eating. I think it's worth spending a couple of minutes on on snacks. Okay, uh, it's it's a big it's a big point for all of us, chill kids and adults, and and at least I sometimes feel this way. You feel like when you're going to the grocery store, this is kind of what you want to do. You want to find some of the biggest uh, bunched packets that you get, uh, because kids kids and us we have a we have a craving for it. Okay, um, I'll, I want to leave you with two simple two simple points. Okay, actually I'll take the I have another point which I'll come to first. Okay, this is the first point I want you to remember. Okay. Food that enters your house will not leave, okay? It's true for everybody, okay? So there's ice cream in your freezer. It is going to get eaten. The question is who gets there first? It's as simple as that, okay? And that's true across adults, kids. If it's there in your house, it is going to get eaten, okay? And the simplest way to control your diet or to have a high-quality diet is how you stock your kitchen and what foods you have available at home. Okay, now this might sound a bit shocking to you, but we don't have biscuits in our house. That doesn't mean my kids don't eat biscuits. Okay, 
They'll go to school, they'll eat snacks, they'll exchange snacks with other kids. They'll have biscuits. They'll go to birthday parties, they'll eat cake, they'll eat biscuits. They'll have, they'll have anything they, they like when they are outside. Okay, And we cannot control that. We really cannot. But we can control what they do when they're at home. right? So 70, 80% of the time, they're going to be eating what's available at home. right? And that's where the parents play a huge role. Okay, You can always decide that we're only going to stock certain foods at home. And you know what? If they really want it, they'll ask you for it more than once. Okay, And, and this is where some experimentation helps because we'll think, you know what? If this packet of food is not there, my kid's going to throw a tantrum. You will be surprised at how reasonable they can be. Okay, mm -hmm. um, And you give them an option. And you say, look, this isn't there. Do you want to try something else? And they're hungry. And honestly, you'll find they'll eat it. Right? And if they really want it, they'll ask you for it three, four, five times. And we, we see that situation play out. And you know what? Over a period, gradually they forget that, you know, these foods are there. So we've had times when we've taken our kids to the supermarket. They'll want a packet of Oreos. We will buy it. We'll bring it home. And they forget about it. They forget about it. It's there inside the cupboard somewhere. If they want, they can find it. It's there. But if it's not there in front of them, they forget about it. Right? And this is the influence of our environment on how we choose to eat. So if on your kitchen countertop, you've got, you know, cornflakes and sugary food and biscuits on display, that is what you're going to think of eating. Okay. So step one, what you stock at home matters. Step two, where you stock it matters. Okay. So if in your house, you, all your treats, if you have any are hidden away, trust me, you're not going to eat it as often. This is fact. Okay. You can try it out. Okay. Or if in your fridge, it's at the back instead of the front, you're going to forget about it. Okay. So it's a simple, but very, very powerful idea. Okay. One, what enters your house and second, where you keep it. So see what that means for you in your house, but it's very powerful. It makes a big difference because then it's easier to do this than have those battles around what's junk and what's healthy. Right. What we want to do is gradually nudge ourselves and the kids to eat healthier. And these nudges are the ones that seem to work very well. The second point is deciding what foods to buy. Okay. Now, we, we live in the age of uh, heavy marketing. Everybody is being sold a product. I mean, um, if you're on social media, I mean, somebody's trying to sell you a health bar or something that they're going to tell you is, is absolutely essential for you or your kids to have. Okay. It could be anything from new variants of Horlicks to a health bar. Okay. Now, it's, it's very hard to analyze each and every uh, product like that on, on, on this session. But if you think about how to distinguish, you know, what's high quality versus not. Okay. The simple rule when I talk to kids, I'll tell them, you know, what's coming from a farm, what's coming from a factory. Okay. And, and the way to think about this is ingredients in the food. So I don't mean when it comes from a farm that the food you're eating has to come from the farm necessarily. Okay. Because if it's a packaged food, it's going to have quite a few ingredients in it. Right. And, and that's where you, you can identify what's a good food, high quality food versus processed. Okay. And, and here's a simple rule that I, I, I use myself. So if on the list of ingredients, there is a product ingredient that is not in our kitchen, that's that's a processed food. Okay. So if in the list of ingredients, again, the simple examples are, you know, natural flavors, preservatives, soy lecithin, things like that. Okay. Now that doesn't mean these are bad. These are treats. They're treats. But if you start seeing ingredients that you don't have in your kitchen, that's the hallmark sign of a processed food. Okay, because that ingredient is added either for an artificial taste or to give the food longer shelf life. Okay, they are not there for health reasons. They are there for other reasons. So when you look at the ingredients, okay, so when you buy, when you shop, never believe what's in the front of a packet. Okay, they, anything, they can say anything. Food manufacturers can say anything on the front of the packet. No one is checking. No one checks. There is no regulator. FSSAI does not check what is on packaging. They only check certain safety standards. So never believe what's on the front of a packet. Okay, Assume it's lies. Turn to the back of the packet. Look at the ingredients. Okay, So you might find drinks like Tang, for example, are 92% sugar. Okay, When you're drinking Tang, you're basically drinking sugar water. <laughs> Fact. Okay, Orange juice is 0.9%. Okay? But that's not the marketing. So again, don't look at the front, turn the packet around, look at the back. And the ingredients are what will help you decide. And the good news is there are more and more 
responsible food companies now who are giving you these options, right? So that's the good news. So it doesn't always have to be a battle. Uh, it isn't that everybody is, is trying to scam you. There are some good responsible brands where you see the ingredients are pretty good, okay? So there is hope, but this gives you a way to identify what you might want to stock at home as snacks and what might not. So I'll leave you with those pointers around food. And, and I just want to spend five minutes just giving you a couple of examples around, you know, sleep is important. Uh, uh, Karan, one more question, yes, I please. guess, before we move to sleep, um, mm. which is what are the healthy options for snacks? So any just top of mind um, things that come to your head as healthy snack options? Sure. So so when it comes to, so I'll, I'll talk about kids first and adults separately because, well, it, it depends on, on, on how sporty or athletic the kids are because some snack options tend to be quite energy dense. So what I mean by that is, Peanuts, nuts, dates, raisins, figs, okay? These are all, you know, high quality foods, okay? Uh, so peanuts, nuts, so badam, kaju, raisins, figs, dates, they're all great choices. The most important thing about them is to have them plain, not flavored, okay? So a plain cashew, you will have five or six. A honey roasted cashew, you will have 40. Because that extra spike of taste and flavor is addictive. Okay. So first, these kind of options are great, they are, but have them plain. Okay. So nuts, for example, or dry fruit. The other option, if you're looking for, especially for adults, for example, if you're looking at low calorie options is things that are mostly air. Okay. Like puffed rice, makhana, or plain popcorn. These are mostly air. They're pretty light and they give you the feeling that you've... Uh, that you've eaten. These tend to be good options. Beyond that, fruit is a no-brainer. Fruit, okay? Not fruit juice, okay? I'll talk about it in a minute, but eating the fruit is much, much better than drinking fruit juice for two reasons. The first, if you think of a glass of apple juice, you need about three apples to make one glass of apple juice. You will drink that apple juice in 30 seconds, okay? Now, if you were to eat that much apple, you will never eat three apples. Okay, you will eat one apple. At best, you can, I mean, really, you can have two apples, but that's hard to do. The reason that the difference is when you have to chew, your brain gets the signal that you're eating food. Okay, so the signals your brain gets when you chew and you take time to eat is very different from when you drink. Okay, so when you have apple juice in 30 seconds, you've had juice worth three apples and also sugars, fruit sugars worth three apples. Uh, even if there is fiber, you're still overeating fruit in juice form compared to eating it. And that's true for adults. That's true for kids. Always, always eat the fruit and never drink the juice. Okay. Eating fruit is a completely different experience for your body than drinking juice. But fruits are a no-brainer. Okay. Uh, you can always have for adults and even kids two, three fruits a day. Easy. No problem. Okay. No problem. You cannot overeat fruit because it will satisfy you. They will reduce cravings. They're also a little bit sweet. Okay. So one is the juice and this uh, is, is avoiding the juice. And the second is uh, it, it fills you up for longer. Right. So I'll recap. I said peanuts. I said nuts. I said dry fruits like raisins, figs, and dates. I said low calorie options like puffed rice. I said makna, plain popcorn. And top of your list, honestly, should be fruits. Always, right? So if you stock it up, and some of this might be convenience, okay? Some fruits you can eat readily, like an apple or a banana is easy. Some fruits take more prep work. Nobody likes eating pomegranate. It's painful. <laughs> it's painful. So... Stock your house with what is easy. If you're going to put in the effort to, you know, pineapple takes effort, pomegranate takes effort, jackfruit takes effort, okay? So some of this is down to convenience, okay? Uh, so some might take prep work. If you're up to it, do the preparation. Uh, but otherwise, there are so many convenient options, right? So an apple is the easiest, banana is easy. Something like an orange takes slight bit of effort. But if you stock three to four fruits, and you can stock it for about four to five days, some of them. So if uh, they are, they are an easy, no-brainer option uh, as far as snacks go. Is that okay, Mupur? Got, got it. Yes. Thank you. Cool. There's another question though, uh, Karan, which is, uh, do we have a standard diet chart for a week with age specific or general? I can share a general one, Mupur, if that helps. So, um, mm -hmm. So what I can share, so one of the things we do in our program is we, we don't prescribe meal plans because it's, it's unnecessary. 
uh, and they tend to be quite restrictive okay because eat like i said specific foods you can worry about you know you know should i have ragi or millet versus rice that makes a very small difference mm -hmm. whereas the bigger problem is we just eat too much grains mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so what we don't do is we don't give specific diet charts because honestly they tend to be restrictive what we do is we tell people look for your height your weight your level of activity here is how much of carbs protein and vegetables you should target on a daily basis so we might say for you know so if you're an adult and you know you're in your 40s you have a desk job you don't get too much exercise we might say okay for you for your height weight etc these many cups of carbs in a day and we'll show you how to measure this much protein in a day this much vegetables in a day right and you can meet that any which way you like we'll tell you what counts as carbs rice roti poha etc we'll tell you what counts as protein we'll tell you what counts as vegetables right and then it's up to you how to make it work and and that's very implementable and the reason i mention that is the the plan i will share uses that language it it has breakfast lunch snacks and dinner but the idea is across those four meals you get that balance of carbs protein and veggies right so i can share a template that template will be for a certain you know based on a certain height and weight so with that caveat but that's the reason we we'll approach it that way and i'm happy to share like a sample meal plan so you can see how to build that right and you can vary the quantities for you but that gives you an example of what does a week's eating look like and within that there'll be some examples of ordering as well because that is a reality of our life we do order mm -hmm. in a fair bit and ordering healthy is is, is its own challenge but i can i can share that with you know for and you can circulate that if that's okay sounds good yeah thank you Cool. So this chart is a simple one. It just tells you top athletes how much they sleep, right? And and again, not something that's talked about. We don't think these athletes sleep much, nine hours. Okay, the average. I mean, Tiger Woods in the middle is dragging the average down, but almost everybody is uh, is eight to nine, if not more, right? And and the top athletes, you'll find enough quotes online. Okay, uh, sleep is a big deal. It's a difference between winning and losing for them. Okay, and and the same applies to especially as kids approach. You know. Uh, events where performance matters it could be sport it could be exams that's where all of this starts to make a big difference and these are habits we as parents need to start focusing on early on right this is not something they're going to catch on in 9th or 10th or 11th unfortunately right so the earlier you start it just becomes a habit you know uh, that that's a much easier way to deal with it so i'm going to really summarize at this point um, and and happy to then keep taking more questions but what we mean when you say eating like a champion we've talked about some champions we've seen what they eat we've seen their importance to whole foods some supplements sleep and sports is something they it's part of their daily life uh, and and the same holds good for you know us and our kids so sleep is is important um professionals like me who do this for a living will tell you this unfortunately your celebrity on instagram is not going to tell you this uh but sleep is the foundation of everything okay good health maintaining a healthy weight avoiding diseases all of that comes back to getting enough sleep it's not easy okay i know it's easy to advise it's not easy i myself have late nights i know it's hard all i'm saying is keep up the good fight cause it's worth it okay sleep is a the foundation then comes diet we talked about the three areas grains vegetables and fruit protein and fats think of that balance right split your plate into three parts look at the examples i shared and then sports and activity again maybe your children are already active but this is true for them as well as us sports are a great way to get exercise okay when we work with people in our program we don't use the word exercise it feels like punishment for people okay because we think exercise is punishment if i eat don't eat right and at the same time if i exercise i feel like food is a reward right that equation is complicated do not think of exercise that way it's not a healthy relationship and there's unnecessary amount of guilt let's not go there okay let's not go there so separate the two you need to eat well cause is good for you you need to move your body cause is good for you they are not connected and what we find is you know if you think of somebody again i'll take a simple example you know uh, badminton is popular nowadays so, so when people go and play badminton they rarely miss a badminton outing with their friends but when somebody joins a gym we know they don't go very often right and and that's the difference between sport and exercise sport is social sport is fun right sport is interesting sport is mentally engaging you're not playing badminton and thinking about work you're not playing badminton and wondering you know what's on your phone right so sport by definition takes care of all of those things so i'd encourage everybody to play sport anything you like doing because it's just fun it's good for your physical and mental health and then everything else is really a distraction okay we're all surrounded by distractions but but effectively what i'm saying is everything else you see or hear about 
is a distraction, whether it's on social media, the internet, the latest supplement, the latest diet, nothing has changed in human diet for over a hundred years. Okay. Nothing has changed. Nothing's going to change for the next hundred. <laughs> this, this, this foundation is remains what it is. What matters then is do you get distracted or not? People who get distracted struggle. People who don't get distracted are fine. Right. So the key is to minimize those distractions and focus on these basics. So I can obviously share a copy of these slides if they're helpful, but I'm happy to take any and any and all questions on your mind. Got it. Thank you, Kanan. Uh, that was insightful for all parents. If you have questions, please feel free to drop in. Meanwhile, maybe I'll have one, Kanan, for you. Sure. Um, you know, you spoke about also marketing, right? There are a lot of uh, things out there, especially for kids. I see there are now gummy bears or, uh, you know, there are other uh, healthy pancakes and stuff. How healthy are they really are? Are they safe? Uh, especially the gummy bears because not eating vegetables is a common uh, issue that we see across kids and, uh, you know, subsequently parents talking about it. So, uh, you know, uh, again, is it safe? Is it recommended? Sure. Um, so, and I guess the gummy bears is an example of a yeah. multivitamin. Okay. Yeah. Now, now the I guess the there's two things worth knowing, I guess. The first is, at least when it comes to multivitamins and things like gummy bears, um, quality matters over everything else. So the brand, the quality practices, unfortunately, at least in India, we don't have strict practices. I mean, you'll still hear about pharmaceutical drugs where there is a problem with quality. And our cough syrups are in the press of late. So yeah. unfortunately, a lot of these in theory might be okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, a multivitamin mm -hmm. in theory is actually absolutely fine. The reality is there are so few trusted brands mm -hmm. that I'd prefer you not having one to trying something out. Because mm -hmm. it comes down to quality. And India, unfortunately, is in the biggest market for the top brands. Uh, and the biggest brands are tend to be quite expensive because they're imported. They have to pay customs duty. So that, that becomes the biggest challenge. Okay. So mm -hmm. and, and, and so if I have to point people to a website, um, I would point you to this website called iherb.com. Okay, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a it's a company in the US. I H E R B. Uh, they sell supplements and multivitamins. They are based in the US. Um, I have no relationship with them. Okay, just so that you know, um, they ship to India. They will also take care of customs and clearance, uh, and you'll see good quality brands there and ratings. Uh, but it's really finding sources for these. So a gummy bear multivitamin by itself isn't a problem. Okay, oh. but it comes down to which one you're having. Right. Um, but what I would say is, look, they're OK for a while. The, the problem becomes, you know, the, you, you're sort of setting the tone for decades. Mm -hmm. So you can either say and, and, and I can, as a parent can say, you know what, I'm going to take a multivitamin as insurance. Mm -hmm. And it feels like that. Right. What's the harm? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I would not take that for granted that what's the harm question. They can be harm. Okay, mm -hmm. because you're setting the tone. If they're going to have it for decades, not just one, two years, right? You're going to have mm -hmm. give it to them for like five, 10, 15 years. I'd say now is the time to plug the gap on veggies and fruit. Because if you're not doing it as parents, it's not going to get done. Got it. Right. So it's not the answer many might want to hear. Yeah. But now is the time to set the tone around it. And like I said, honestly, it's quite doable. You know, it, it, it feels mm -hmm. like a battle, but it comes back. I, I, I come back to the thing that works best for most people is just what you stock at home. Mm -hmm. what you stock it on. But brands, just you need to be, quality checking is a problem. Multivitamins are okay, not an issue. It's just getting a good and reliable brand. I would also say there's only space for like one or two things like this in your daily life, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what we can end up doing is, you know, what's the harm in a multivitamin? What's the harm in a probiotic? What's the harm? No, 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 no. That's a dangerous mm -hmm. game to play. Don't go mm -hmm. there. Don't go mm -hmm. there. There, there is harm. There is harm. Sure, okay? Do not sure. say what is the harm because it sounds harmless. So mm -hmm. you got a multivitamin, fine, but you're done. You're mm -hmm. done as far as supplements are concerned. Kids should not be having any more. Uh, the rest has to come from. Uh, this. Hello, Karan, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you got stuck for a minute. But yeah, I think I got your point that while they are safe, but maybe not safe for long and not the right alternative to look for. Exactly. And, and I think, sorry, I've just seen a couple of questions around yes. milk. So maybe I can take that up now. So, 
So two questions, I guess. What can one is what's better, cow milk or buffalo milk? Um, the main difference tends to be around uh, fat content of of the milk. We actually use both in my house. So my kids will have cow's milk, and the curd we make is from buffalo milk. Okay, mm-hmm. um, it just tends to be much thicker. The texture is great, and they are very very active. So. For me, I'm actually trying to pack as much calories as possible into little foods. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but both are fine. It comes down to look. One is just much higher energy than the other. So, if the level of activity for your child warrants it, there's no harm in having buffalo milk at all. Okay. So, like I said, in a house, they'll drink cow's milk and they'll have curd from buffalo milk. That's absolutely okay because they're super active. Okay. They'll. It's about fifteen to twenty hours of sport a week. Okay, fifteen to twenty hours. It's about two two and a half hours every single day. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but both are okay. Beyond that, I would say just see how they digest it. The best indication of what's good for them is whether their body responds. Okay, again, the theory is great. Cows versus buffalo milk. You know, I can do a chart, but try both. See how they pay attention to how they react. Is their digestion okay? Are they still, you know, bowel movements are fine? That's the best indication of does it suit them or not. And you will find out if you have a food within twenty four hours, you get a reaction. If they react to it. So try it out, but there's no harm in, in having both. In terms of what can be mixed to milk, the example I take is, you know, between your bone vitas and your horlicks, uh, avoidable, honestly avoidable. The list of ingredients is way too long. It, it's unnecessary. Um, what I end up doing and, and is, works well for many is I take plain milk, I'll take plain sugar, I will take cocoa powder, plain cocoa powder. Okay, so quite a few brands like Hershey's will do plain cocoa powder. And I have chocolate milk. Okay. I mean, the sugar is there anyway. Let's face it. (laughs) No matter what drink you give them in the morning, you're never getting away from a little bit of sugar. So I'd rather just have, you know, uh, a good, you know, white sugar, brown sugar, any good quality sugar. I'll put a spoon of that. I'll put uh, cocoa powder and plain milk. Right. And you avoid any of the other nasty ingredients. And the kids are happy because it's sweet. It's chocolatey. I mean, (laughs) and it's chocolate milk. Right. But there's a difference between your, uh, your bone vitas, your horlicks of the world. And again, read the ingredients, read the ingredients. Don't see their vitamin list. See the ingredients. There's anywhere from 10 to 20 ingredients. And that's the problem in having that as your daily diet. So cocoa powder, milk. And again, if they like anything else, you get quite a few, you know, your ragi mixes, things like that, which just tend to be a combination of grains. Those are things which are absolutely fine to add. It it just comes down to what do they like? But again, if you take my simple example of chocolate milk, I'm, you know, that's a simple template. You start with simple ingredients, right? And they're very quick to make. It takes, you know, two minutes to mix it up at, at home. Yeah, got it. Building on to this, uh, Kanan, there's also now also this A2 cow milk. You know, what's the difference for mm. A2 and non-A2? Yeah, so the whole, uh, so what you will hear is, uh, so the difference is, uh, it's the reason it exists is for people who cannot digest milk. So lactose okay. intolerance okay. is the issue for some people. And, and that is why A2 milk is advertised as it is suitable for people who are not able to digest mm-hmm. milk. So my starting point is, is there a problem? Mm-hmm. Okay, Because it's very easy to say, you know, I'm going to go gluten-free, I'm going to go vegan, I'm going to have A2 milk. Mm-hmm. Because it, it's, it, you can, you can, I can, a good marketing person can convince you to do one or all three of them. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on uh, all three are unnecessary to begin with. Okay, you you do these things if you have a problem. Okay, some people cannot digest milk. Some people cannot digest uh, wheat. It's a medical condition. Mm-hmm. It's a medical condition. Okay, lactose intolerance is a medical condition in the sense that your body is not able to produce an enzyme to digest milk. If you've got these issues, then is the case to start looking at an alternative. Okay, but these are rare. Okay, this doesn't happen to ninety eight, ninety nine percent of the population. Okay, Got it's it. market. It's marketed to everybody, but the starting point is, you know, and this is where history is fine. What did your grandparents eat? What did our parents eat? What are we eating? Why mm-hmm. are we changing what we're eating? Mm-hmm. Okay, and there has to be a good reason, especially if you're going to try something that's completely different. You better do it for a good reason. Okay, stopping wheat is not a joke. Stopping milk is not a joke. Okay, when you don't eat these foods, you're missing out on nutrition. Okay, people yeah. don't tell you that. They'll say, "Oh, go go vegan." What does that mean? It means you're not going to get enough calcium. You're not going to get enough uh, protein. You're not going to get enough of certain vitamins. That nobody will tell you. It's just fashionable. So if you're going to do something other than what you are always been doing, think long and hard about it. Okay. 
including or excluding a completely new food has consequences. And like I said, A2, for example, is meant for people who are lactose intolerant. If you are mm. lactose intolerant, you will already know it. Mm. Okay. If you are not lactose intolerant, if you're not, if you aren't reacting to what you're doing now, you are not intolerant to anything. And and the starting point should be one of not changing. Okay. And and A2 milk certainly is not something you're missing out on. Uh, so I wouldn't uh, make a case for it again, unless you're lactose intolerant. Sure, sure. Uh, Karan, you might have seen there's one more question that has popped up. Can you give me a diet plan for four-year-old baby? Yeah, uh, I, 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 we don't work with children, so I wouldn't, uh, I, I, I'm hesitant to, I can give you, I won't give you a diet plan as such, but honestly, again, based on my experience and, you know, we, we know enough about nutrition for children. It, it's not, it's honestly not any or different from exactly what I've described. Okay. So if you think about a lot of it is based on, you know, uh, how you cook the food, what they're able to digest. But when I look back at what my kids were eating, you know, from when they could eat solids, it was not any more different than um, what I have described, which is a combination of rice, simple grains, vegetables, fruit, dairy, right? It's, it's honestly as simple as that. My, my worry is you shouldn't be under the impression there is a perfect diet plan. There isn't. There isn't. And I think that's unfortunately what a lot of people are looking for. You know, mm -hmm. diet plan mm -hmm. No, no, you, you, it's it's hard because, and, and we see this a lot. Uh, yeah, we see a lot with adults. But for children, honestly, it's it's getting this balance right. You know, it's, it's getting this balance right from an early age, from an mm -hmm. early age. So mm -hmm. if you look at the earlier plates I shared with you, right? You could easily have cooked mashed versions of vegetables, right? Kids can digest that early. So if I look at carrots or other vegetables, it's really just cooking mechanisms that change. The basic ingredients do not change at all. They don't need to change at all. So it's exactly the same principles. And what I would encourage you to look at, especially for a four-year-old is, is there enough vegetable and fruit in the diet? Okay. Because Got what it. we find at a very early age is the sugary junk starts going up quite a lot between the mm. conflicts, the chocos, the fruit pops, the biscuits, all of that is, is really what causes problems. Okay. And it's making space, moving those to be a very, very small portion of your diet. Like a biscuit is not a daily snack. It's a treat. Okay. You can't have dessert on a daily basis, but it's a habit the kids need to form. Right. Mm. So it's, it's clearing out all of those foods, but really making space for your veggies and your fruit to be a larger part of your daily diet. Yeah. I Same know that's kind of a 20,000 feet answer, but honestly, that that's that's uh, I, I wouldn't give you a specific diet chart because there isn't one. It's really building your baby's diet using these foods. Sounds good. And it's the same principles that you spoke about earlier. Yeah, yeah. And, and the only other point I'll make uh, that's true for kids and adults is the Indian way of cooking is, is a great template because what we haven't discussed is herbs and spices. Because that mm -hmm. makes its way across all of the dishes that we're going to cook. And that's where sticking to what we know about the way we already cook vegetables in India is important. Okay. All of those little herbs and spices, it could be salt, pepper, garam masala, turmeric, you know, the jeera, the sauf, all of that, all of that that we use in the cooking is very powerful. So we shouldn't rush to say, you know, here is this Western food. I'm not saying Western is bad, Indian is good, but there's no reason to disturb what you're going. Don't take what you've already got going for granted. Right? Mm -hmm. We tend to do that. Right? We're like, mm -hmm. you know, what's new? What's new is, is, is not the right question to be asking. Right? Mm -hmm. um, if you look at what we've already been doing, there's a lot we're doing that's right. A lot. Okay? Uh, so change with caution. Don't rush to change. And, and the same holds true when we're thinking about your children, four-year-olds, what to eat. The way we cook our foods, all of that gives them a lot of other things like these herbs and spices that they will not get if you switch to. Like a cornflakes versus an idli is night and day, okay? Idli is fermented, for example, right? Yeah. Now, if you pull out your idli from your diet, you're pulling out a fermented food that you need for your gut. Hmm. Right? Hmm. Now, I, I don't want to give you a, you know, a lecture on gut microbiota. All I'm saying is, if you have it in your diet, change carefully with an expert don't go with what's new understood yeah i think that's a good insight um on that note i think we're already over time i don't want to keep you waiting um and thanks to all the parents for all the wonderful questions i hope it was useful for all of you and um, i'll share across the sample like chart that kanan would be sharing with me with all of you hope that helps as well 
So thank you so much again. Thanks, Kanan, for uh, taking the time out. And I wish all of you a great and happy weekend. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.